There is a little more energy and excitement at the local cattle auction in eastern Ontario today. Beef producers are some of the biggest winners of the comprehensive and progressive Trans-Pacific Partnership. For the future of our industry and our future producers, this deal uh, is, is a godsend for us. A wide range of Canadian industries, including cattle ranchers, will be able to ship their products for less and more easily to the other 10 countries in the agreement, including Japan, the world's third largest economy. We could add another $200 million worth of value of product going into Japan once this deal gets into play. The agreement reached in Tokyo today is the right deal. The Prime Minister welcomed the breakthrough in negotiations from the World Economic Forum in Davos, Switzerland. Justin Trudeau had been the holdout, walking away from talks last fall over concerns around the auto sector and protecting Canadian culture. But discussions continued quietly, and after the trade minister spent the weekend working the phones, Canada saw the concessions it wanted. I think uh, this is a great achievement uh, for Canadians and Canadian workers. Some Canadian workers say the concessions don't go far enough. The automotive industry is furious. Ford, GM, Chrysler, the auto parts suppliers, everybody is up in arms right now in Canada over what just transpired. Unifor President Jerry Dias predicts more than 20,000 job losses because of the agreement. He says the new rules of origin are set so low, the deal allows Japanese car makers to use cheap Chinese parts to build cars at home for less and then ship them to North America. But Ottawa says it's found other protections for the industry. We also stood up for the auto sector, making sure that we would have a side letter with Japan that would provide the greatest market access ever for the auto industry. The auto industry is already on edge because of the ongoing NAFTA negotiations. Union workers marched in Montreal today where talks just resumed. But Canada's chief negotiator insists the new deal won't have an impact on talks with Mexico and the U.S. TPP was a separate negotiation with separate players, separate considerations. Uh, NAFTA negotiation has a dynamic all of its own. Katie, as we know, is in Montreal for the NAFTA negotiations today. Uh, it was interesting, Katie, because the Canada's Minister of International Trade does say that those talks aren't compromised and that the only message the TPP sends to the U.S. is that Canada needs to diversify. We'll play that and I'll get you to analyze it for us. The United States is our largest trading partner and will always be there. Geography, the size of the economy. Uh, this is a, our relationship is providing millions of good middle class jobs. But when you have more than 70% of your export to one country, I think people would realize that it's in Canada's best interest uh, to look west and to look east. So do we think that this deal actually does affect the talks that you're watching today? Well, Rosie, at first glance, it looks like it could give Canada some new leverage. NAFTA talks are not going very well, and finding new markets is important in case this all goes south. But when you take a closer look, some of the things that Canada agreed to in the CPTPP actually appear to oppose what they are fighting for in NAFTA. The U.S. could look at concessions Canada made on dairy and then say, hey, if you're making a concession in the New Deal, why don't you make those concessions in NAFTA? And that could end up weakening Canada's position. Also, Donald Trump does not like doing trade with the Chinese. This New Deal could see more Chinese goods inadvertently end up in Canada, and that may only irk the U.S. negotiators. Rosie. Okay. Thanks for that. That's Katie Simpson in Montreal tonight. Canada already has trade agreements in place with more than 40 countries, making up more than half of the global economy. One of our oldest partnerships is, of course, NAFTA, with the United States and Mexico, which has fundamentally reshaped the North American economy. Two years ago, we gained access to the entire European Union of 28 states through CETA. And this new Trans-Pacific Partnership deal would add Japan's famously closed domestic market and some other emerging Asian nations to that total. So where are we headed next? Canada's holding preliminary talks with China, the world's fastest-growing major economy, and we're already negotiating a trade deal with India, where the prime minister will be heading next month. Part of the reason Canada seems to be so good at getting trade deals done is that free trade is something both conservative and liberal governments believe helps the economy. This country is going to have in the decades to come probably the best global free trade access in the world. Indeed, the past two deals were started under conservatives, tweaked and signed by liberals with what the prime minister calls more progressive measures. It's not easy. It would have been easier for us to just say, okay, fine, we, trade is important, we'll sign in and we'll try and figure it out later. 
But if we're going to push back against the anti-trade tendency in globalization that will leave us all worse off, we have to put the concerns and the well-being of our ordinary citizens at the center of what we are negotiating. Of course, that is the polar opposite of Canada's biggest trading partner, at least right now. The president just today preaching more protectionism as the answer to economic woes. Our companies will not be taken advantage of anymore, and our workers are going to have lots of really great jobs with products that are going to be made in the good old USA. But perhaps the biggest key to Canada's trade wins the experienced negotiating team touted by this government and others as world class. Steve Verhul was the closer for the Canada-Europe trade deal, which gives this country access to a $20 trillion market. He is now the lead negotiator for NAFTA. We've come to Montreal with a lot of new ideas, a lot of creative strategies to try to bridge some of the gaps in the negotiations. Yep.